Hi my dear students, welcome back to the class. So far we were discussing about trigonometric functions, isn't it? We discussed about sin x, cos x and reciprocal of sin x and reciprocal of cos x and even we discussed about tan x and cot x, isn't it? Also we discussed about the signs of various trigonometric functions when it comes to different quadrants, isn't it? So I hope all of those things were clear for you. Now we are going to define or discuss about trigonometric functions of sum and difference of two angles uh, that is suppose that you are given with two angles x and y then we can derive sin x plus y cos x plus y and sin x minus y cos x minus y and moreover we can derive and discuss about various the other four trigonometric functions when it comes to the sum and difference of two angles so without any further intro we shall directly move on to the subject so now we shall define the first trigonometric identity here you can see a unit circle before moving into the unit circle in the previous class we have learned that sine of minus x is equal to minus sine of x isn't it also we learned that cos of minus x is equal to cos x so these two identities will be used here in order to derive a new identity called the trigonometric function for sum of two angle let us discuss how we can use this before moving into the concept we can analyze this unit circle at the first you can see that a unit circle is here of course by the as the name suggests the radius of the circle is one unit okay let me mark some points over here p4 p1 p2 and p3 so i marked four points over the unit circle and of course since the point p4 lies on the x-axis it is evident that the coordinates of the point p4 is nothing but 1 0 now let us let the arc length of p4 p1 you can see an arc p4 p1 here let the arc length be x units of course since it is a unit circle an arc of length x unit will subtend an angle x radians at the center now let me mark the point P2 such that the uh, distance between P1 and P2 along this arc be Y units. Then from P4 to P2 there is X plus Y units is the arc length. The arc length of P4 P2 is X plus Y unit and hence the angle formed at the center in this arc will be X plus y radians so a total of x plus y radians now of course you know that if the angle subtended at the center is x radians then the corresponding coordinates of that point will be what the x component is cos x and the y component is sin x isn't it we know that we formed a right angle triangle and we know that if the angle is theta then the component lies in the x axis is x cos x and component the y axis is uh, x sin x do you remember this sorry this component x sin x so all these uh, results whenever we are given with a right angle triangle we know that the uh, component lies in the x axis is cos x and the component lies in the y axis is sin x likewise we can name the coordinate p1 as cos x sin x now coming on to this point p2 we know that the entire arc length is x plus y unit so that the angle formed at the center is x plus y radian so that here also by the same method the coordinates of this point is cos x plus y and sin x plus y the coordinate corresponding to x axis is cos x plus y and the coordinate in the y direction is sin x plus y so this is the point p2 let me mark another point p3 in such a way that the angle measured is in the clockwise direction therefore the angle here is minus y radian so here the angle measured in the clockwise direction since this is y radians minus y radians should be in the opposite direction isn't it so the corresponding coordinates will be p3 is equal to cos minus y and sin minus y just like the previous cases okay so this is our entire circle now we are going to derive a new trigonometric identity using this unit circle before that let me mark two triangles let this as you can see p1 o p3 be a triangle since there we get a triangle triangle p1 o p3 and if i join these two points p4 and p2 i get a new triangle triangle p2 o p4 as you can see 
we get two triangles. Now you have to visualize these two triangles in your mind. See this is a triangle and you can see that this is the radius and this is the radius. Also you can see a triangle here. This is the radius and this is the radius and the angle formed at the center is magnitude of that angle is y units. So of course since these two sides are equal and it lies inside a unit circle you can see that P1 of P3 triangle P1 of P3 and P2 of P4 are congruent triangles congruent triangles we know that since these two sides represents radius isn't it so whenever we uh, and it lies inside a unit circle we get those two triangles are congruent triangle okay now we got p1 of p3 and p2 of p4 as congruent triangle then definitely the third side must also be equal which means that p1 p3 must be equal to p2 p4 isn't it so this must be the case now we know that the coordinates p1 and p3 again we know the coordinates of p2 and p4 isn't it therefore we can find p1 p3 square isn't it p1 p3 square is equal to we have p1 is equal to cos x sin x p3 is equal to cos minus y sin minus y isn't it so p1 p3 square is equal to cos x minus cos minus y the whole square plus sin x minus sin of minus y the whole square isn't it by using the distance formula you know what is the distance formula isn't it so now we know that cos of minus x is equal to cos x itself sin of minus x is equal to minus sin of x so applying those quantities here we get it is equal to cos x minus cos y the whole square plus sin x minus of minus plus sin of y the whole square isn't it because we know that sine of minus y is nothing but minus sine x sine y so it will become like this so this is the case now we can uh, expand this using the formula for a plus b the whole square you know what is a plus b the whole square it is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square isn't it now substituting this formula in here we get it is equal to cos square x plus cos square y minus 2 cos x sin sorry 2 cos x cos y plus sin square x plus sin square y plus 2 sin x sin y isn't it now we know that cos square x plus sin square x is equal to 1 so this plus will be 1 and cos square y plus sin square y is again 1 so 1 plus 1 is equal to a 2 there now we can take minus 2 as common so it will become minus 2 into cos x cos y minus sin x sin y isn't it so this is the equation number one so we get like this now we can find p2 p4 what is p2 p4 p2 p4 is the distance this isn't it so we can find p2 p4 the whole square is equal to what is the coordinate of p4 1 0 coordinate of p2 cos x plus y sin x plus y isn't it so it will become 1 minus cos x plus y the whole square plus again 0 minus sin x plus y the whole square isn't it so this is the case now we shall expand this as 1 square plus cos square x plus y minus 2 cos x plus y isn't it again 0 minus sin x plus y is sin square x plus y so because 0 minus sin x plus y is minus sin x plus y when we take the square it will become plus so plus sin square x plus y again you can see that here we have cos square x plus y and sin square x plus y so that sum will be 1 so here we have a 1 cos square x plus y plus sin square x plus y is again 1 so 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 2 minus 2 cos x plus y will be the case so this is the equation number 2 since p1 p3 equal to p2 p4 p1 p3 square must be equal to p2 p4 square so this must be equal so we can equate the equation number 1 and equation number 2 isn't it so when we equate equation number 1 and equation number 2 let me erase this 
so when we equate equation number one and equation number two we have equation number one is equal to two minus two cos x cos y minus sin x sin y it is equal to equation number two is equal to two minus two cos x plus y two minus two cos x plus y here we can cancel 2 from here and minus 2 from here so the answer will be cos x plus y is equal to cos x cos y minus sin x sin y see we got the sum of angles of a trigonometric function if we are given with angle x and y then cos x plus y is nothing but cos x cos y minus sin x sin y this is the first trigonometric identity to denote the sum of a trigonometric function so this is going to be very very important so this is the first one see this is the first one this is second one in that case then this is the third trigonometric identity so now we shall move on to the next one so now we have these three trigonometric identities now let us uh, derive the next one as cos x minus y see we already de derived cos x plus y now we are going to find cos x minus y as you can see that this can be splitted into cos x plus minus y isn't it so instead of finding cos x plus y if we put y is equal to minus y then we can get cos x minus y isn't it let us try cos x here we are putting instead of y we are putting minus y so cos of minus y minus sin x sin of minus y isn't it so we get an equation like this now we know that cos of minus y is equal to cos y itself so cos x cos y minus sin x sin of minus y is equal to minus sin of x so minus into minus will be plus sin of y so we get cos x minus y is equal to what cos x cos y plus sin x sin sin y this is going to be the fourth trigonometric identity so learn this trigonometric identity as well now coming on to the fifth trigonometric identity we, we know that cos pi by 2 minus x we are going to find the value of cos pi by 2 minus x as we have derived cos x minus y is equal to this in order to find cos pi by 2 minus x it is enough to substitute pi by 2 instead of x and x instead of y isn't it see here pi by 2 lies in the place of x and x lies in the place of y isn't it so cos pi by 2 minus x is equal to cos pi by 2 into cos x plus sin pi by 2 into sin x isn't it we just substituted these two quantities in this entire relationship hence we can see that cos pi by 2 is equal to 0 so 0 into something is equal to 0 plus sin pi by 2 is equal to 1 1 into sin x hence it will be equal to sin x so cos pi by 2 minus x is equal to sin x similarly suppose that we have to find out sin pi by 2 minus x see we already derived sin x is equal to cos pi by 2 minus x isn't it so instead of this x we are going to put this angle so sin pi by 2 minus x is equal to so whenever we reverse this in the place of x we have to substitute pi by 2 minus x isn't it it is equal to cos pi by 2 minus in the place of x now we have pi by 2 minus x therefore pi by 2 minus pi by 2 minus x will be the angle so what we have done here is we know that sin x is equal to cos pi by 2 minus x so instead of that x we have we are going to put pi by 2 minus x see here we have instead of this pi by 2 minus x so in the left hand side also we are going to substitute instead of x pi by 2 minus x that's what happened it is equal to cos pi by 2 minus pi by 2 minus into minus plus x it is equal to this will be cancels and it is equal to cos x so we can see that sin pi by 2 minus x is equal to cos x cos pi by 2 minus x is equal to sin x next we are going to derive the next very basic and fundamental trigonometric identity which is sin x plus y 
as you can see we first very first we derived cos x plus y but now only we are going to derive sin x plus y let it be there now sin x plus y you can see that sin x is equal to cos pi by 2 minus x isn't it so instead of x here we have x plus y so it will be is equal to cos pi by 2 minus x plus y isn't it see instead of x we just substituted x plus y now we shall just rearrange this it will be equal to cos pi by 2 minus x plus sorry minus y isn't it see minus x minus y and i associated pi by 2 minus x into one bracket and y into the next one so it is of the form cos x minus y isn't it an angle minus another angle now we know that cos x minus y is equal to cos x cos y sin x sin y then it will be equal to cos pi by 2 minus x cos y plus sin pi by 2 minus x sin y isn't it now again we know that cos pi by 2 minus x is equal to what sin x so sin x cos y plus sin pi by 2 minus x is equal to what cos x cos x sin y so we have sin x plus y is equal to what sin x cos y plus cos x sin y too much important and you have to by heart it by the time now so you have to very much uh, focus on these two trigonometric identities because these two trigonometric identities serves as the fundamental trigonometric identities next we are going to derive the trigonometric identity for sine of x minus y we know that sine of x minus y can be obtained by it can be rearranged as sine x plus minus y so in the place of y if we substitute minus y here we get sine x minus y isn't it so it is equal to sine x cos of minus y plus cos x sine of minus y isn't it now we know that cos of minus y is equal to cos x so it will be become sin x cos y plus cos x sin of minus y is equal to minus sin x so plus into minus minus sin of y so this will be what sin of x minus y so if you can observe the equation number 3 and equation number 4 and equation number 7 and equation number 8 this is going to be the 8th one equation number 8 you can say that if we are asked to find what is sine pi plus x or what is sine pi minus x or even what is sine 2 pi plus x etc you can easily or we, if we are asked to find cos pi plus x etc you can easily use one among the suitable trigonometric identity from 3 4 7 and 8 in order to find this one let me choose one uh, at random let me find cos pi plus x pi instead of x and x instead of y isn't it let me do by that equation the third equation by the third equation we have cos pi plus x is equal to cos pi cos x minus sin pi sin x and we know that sin pi is equal to 0 and cos pi is equal to minus 1 so the answer will be minus cos x see just like this we can find any sum of angles of trigonometric function or any difference of angles of trigonometric functions just by uh, using one among the four formulas 3 is equal to cos x plus y is equal to cos x cos y sin x sin y or cos x minus y is equal to cos x cos y sin x sin y and again sin x plus y is equal to sin x cos y cos x sin y and again the eighth one we have sin x minus y is equal to sin x cos y minus cos x sin y so this eight equations serves as the most important or most fundamental equations or identities in the trigonometric ratio so always remember that trigonometric functions of sum and difference of two angles the most important uh, one among those equations are these four equations so never ever forget these four next we are going to find out tan x plus y see if ta we, when we are uh, discussing about tan x plus y we have to define the dom domain precisely because tan x plus y is not defined for 
odd multiples of pi by 2 isn't it because tan x is equal to sin x by cos x and cos x is equal to 0 for odd multiples of pi by 2 hence tan x will not be defined for odd multiples of the angle so whenever we define tan x plus y then x plus y or x or y must not be equal to 2n plus 1 pi by 2 must not be not even not a multiple of of 2n plus 1 pi by 2 which means that the angles must not be a multiple of 2n plus 1 pi by 2 that is odd multiple of pi by 2 then only the function is defined so let it be there now we know that tan x plus y is nothing but what sin x plus y divided by cos x plus y isn't it okay now sin x plus y is given by the equation sin x cos y plus cos x sin y isn't it it is equal to sin x cos y plus cos x sin y so this is what we call sin x plus y whole divided by cos x plus y it is given by the equation cos x cos y minus sin x sin y isn't it cos x cos y minus sin x sin y now i am going to divide the numerator and denominator by cos x cos y okay in order to just for the easiness of rearrangement i am going to divide the numerator and the denominator y by cos x cos y then it will become listen very carefully it is going to be very important sin x cos y divided by cos x cos y plus cos x cos, cos x sin y divided by cos x cos y whole divided by cos x cos y divided by cos x cos y minus sin x sin y divided by cos x cos y isn't it now you can see that sin x by cos x it is equal to tan x and cos y and cos y cancels here plus here you can see that cos x and cos x cancels sin y by cos y is equal to tan y whole divided by again you can see that cos x cos y divided by cos x cos y is equal to 1 1 minus sin x sin y by cos x cos y you can see that sin x by cos x is equal to what tan x into sin y by cos y is equal to what tan y so this is what we call tan x plus y tan x plus y is therefore nothing but tan x plus tan y divided by 1 minus tan x tan y similarly we can easily derive tan x minus y what we have to do is instead of y we have to put minus y that's it let us check it is equal to tan x plus tan of minus y whole divided by 1 minus tan x tan of minus y and you know that tan of minus y is nothing but minus tan y because you know that tan x is equal to sin x divided by cos x therefore tan of minus x is equal to sin of minus x divided by cos of minus x again you know that sin of minus x is equal to minus sin x isn't it divided by cos of minus x is equal to cos x now sin x by cos x is equal to tan x so it will be minus tan x so you can see that tan of minus x is nothing but minus tan x so it will become tan x minus tan y whole divided by tan of minus y is nothing but minus tan of y so minus into minus plus 1 plus tan x tan y so this is the formula for tan x minus y and you have tan x plus y here and tan x minus y here now we shall find out the next important formula for cos x plus y as we know that sorry cot x plus y as we know that cot x is equal to cos x by sin x and the denominator sin x will be zero whenever the angle is a multiple of pi so in order for cot x plus y to be defined either x or y or x plus y is not a multiple of pi isn't it you should, should read this as multiple of pi okay now in that case we can define cot x plus y is equal to cos x plus y divided by sin x plus y 
So it is equal to, we know that cos x plus y is equal to cos x cos y minus sin x sin y. Cos x cos y minus sin x sin y divided by and sin x plus y. We know that it is equal to sin x cos y plus cos x sin y, isn't it? It is equal to sin x cos y plus cos x sin y cos x sin y. So now we are going to divide the numerator and denominator by what? Sin x sin y. Sin x sin y. Always remember that we are going to divide the when we divide the numerator and a denominator by such a number the entire expression will be minimized. That's what our aim is. So it will become cos x cos y divided by sin x sin y minus sin x sin y divided by sin x sin y whole divided by sin x cos y divided by sin x sin y plus cos x co, uh, cos x sin y divided by sin x sin y isn't it therefore we have cos x cos y divided by sin x sin y we know that this is equal to cot x and this is equal to cot y it is equal to cot x cot y minus this will be 1 since it will cancel each other it will be 1 divided by again these two cancels and the rest will be cot y plus again this will be cancelled and the rest is cot x so cot x cot y minus 1 divided by cot y plus cot x will be what cot x plus y similarly we can find out cot x minus y just by substituting minus y instead of y it is equal to cot x cot of minus y minus 1 whole divided by cot of minus y plus cot of x isn't it since cot x is equal to cos x by sin x and sin of minus x is equal to minus sin x we can easily find out that cot of minus y is minus cot y hence it will be equal to cot x into minus cot y minus 1 divided by minus cot y plus cot x isn't it it is equal to minus cot x cot y minus 1 divided by minus cot y minus sorry plus cot x if it is required you can take minus common outside so it will become cot x cot y plus 1 divided by cot y minus cot x so that minus 1 will be cancelled that is it will become cot x cot y plus 1 divided by what cot y minus cot x so this will be what cot x minus y so that's the uh, formula for cot x plus y and cot x minus y so these are the 12 trigonometric identities we learned today so i hope each and every trigonometric identities we learned today is very clear for you and if you have any doubt regarding any of those 12 trigonometric identities identities just contact me and make sure that you are clear with the process of deriving it always remember that the all these trigonometric identities basically arise from these three trigonometric identities so if you forget any of them you can use these three trigonometric identities and you can easily derive any one of them using the same process we adopted and in the next class we will derive the more trigonometric identities just like this and that will be more uh, more content related so you have to very much clear about this 12 in order to understand the next class so in the next class we shall uh, see with more trigonometric identities till then wait for the next class bye bye